Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order at 6 30. Uh, do we have additions? I guess we do. Yes. You have one. The listers uh, provided a memo um, towards the end of the day today with um, some errors and omissions for the board to review. Okay. Nobody else has anything? Okay. Review of minutes uh, for September 12th and September 14th. Did everybody have a chance to read the minutes? I did. I mean, I'm happy to approve them as written, but <clears throat> um, I'm happy I have to and I, I just might have no video for the day, but um, I have reviewed the minutes and I think they're fine. Um, thank you. I make a motion we accept the minutes as written. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And that was the 12th. And what about the 14th? I move to approve the September 14th minutes as written. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Public comment. We have one member of the public here. Two. 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 That's right. <laughs> Two. Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm from the public. I'm just here to support and encourage my wonderful select board members. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm here on a public comment. My name is Dexter LaFaver. I'm running for state senate. So I'm here to introduce myself to the board, board members that don't know me. <coughs> I live over in Middlesex um, I'm on the ballot with both the Republican and Libertarian nomination. I'm trying to focus on <coughs> making Vermont a more affordable place to live. Um, Bridging the divide, the partisan divide that exists everywhere, and um, uh, just trying to promote sensible, pol sensible policies, especially with regard to energy, healthcare, the environment, education. The list is kind of endless, but I, you know, I think that uh, Vermont can do better in in all areas, and that's what really I'm all about is trying to make us all better off. So I'm happy to take any questions anybody has. Um, I've got some campaign literature that I'd love to hand out Thank to you. everyone. Thank you. That's it, my contact card. So if you want to reach out to me about anything, find out more about the campaign, and Dexter4DT.com is the website. So info, contact, donate, you can do it all <laughs> right there. Okay, all right. Well, thank, thank, you. You. Thank, yep. thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Sure thing. Have a good night. You and yourself? Yes, sir. Thank you. But your, did you have something you want to send? I did. Michael Dwayne. Yep. Mark and Rhodes. Oh, I just wanted to put in a, I just wanted to put in a pitch again for the select board to uh, publish its uh, agendas on front porch form, even though it's not the official um, posting of official notices. Um, I just think it's important to let people know that we have a select board and they're doing stuff and that uh, they're active and there's interesting issues and there's an agenda. Um, Middlesex publishes its agenda on front porch form. It's interesting to look at. Uh, Callis does likewise. It's interesting to look at, and Plainfield does as well. I'm sure there's other towns, but um, unless I'm missing something, and please let me know if I am. I know it's public comment. Um, I just don't see any good reason why our select board wouldn't publish its agenda on front porch forum. Again, it's not an official posting, but I think it'd be helpful for the board and the town and the members of the town. And uh, I know I mentioned it once before, but um, I thought I'd just come back and uh, mention it again. Okay. If I am missing something, please let me know. But I know it's sure. just public comments, not a discussion. So. Right. Well, thank you for expressing that. And we'll 
take that up at some point. Okay, great. Not right at the moment, but we will take it up. I cut. Anyway, okay. thank you very much. Okay, thank you. you. Might hang out for a few minutes. Sure, please. Okay, so um, that takes care of public comment. Next item on our agenda is consideration of VLCT passive membership renewal. Um, this isn't necessarily prices. They won't tell you that, yeah. Correct. This is us submitting an updated and essentially everything pretty much the same as last year. Um, the only real change is as it relates to the payroll worksheet, mm -hmm. because as you are all aware, we have had staffing changes in the office and pay rate changes as well. And this is reflective of those changes. So, Dana, I just had a chance to skim what you sent over the little spreadsheety thing. Is this, a, this is assuming a 3% cost yes. of living increase? Yeah, that's okay. just a high level estimate, correct. Okay. Could be plus or minus that. Yep. So our renewal will go up just because our payroll's gone? Yeah. It should. Yeah. yeah. It will. It's just a percentage of your. Yeah. And I actually reached payroll. out to VLCT because I didn't have any background on how the numbers were calculated on this document in the past <clears throat> to ensure I was including the right. Yeah. You know, who yeah. went into what buckets and they confirmed mm -hmm. all of that for me. So this time we will have something that will show what the, what the calculation was so we can at least. So we need a motion just to renew the. Yes. Passive. Due on Friday. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we make a motion. Fine with me. I'll make a motion that the board authorizes town administrator Jenkins to sign and submit the pay renewal paperwork for the passive uh, VLCT passive program. Second. Any further discussion? And we're going to authorize the town administrator to sign and submit the renewal paperwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Uh, the next thing on our agenda is a road foreman report. So a few minutes early, we could take care of the listers' uh, errors and omissions. Uh, let's see. This is right here. Is errors and omissions on the website? Oh, yes, it is. I see. I'm blind. Sorry. Well, if you were out there earlier, it was a late ad because this <laughs> came in late. Okay. So I just, I just you may not, if you were out there earlier, you may not have seen it. Yeah. We just need to, we just need a motion to add this to mm -hmm. our list, I believe. Okay, so they found 0.89 acres of land, of land twice. How, how do number, do you know how numbers one and two this work? This is all they passed to me okay. at the end of the day today. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I know. It looks like the this exact the same thing. The only yeah. details I have. Yeah, parcel number, the parcel number is slightly different, mm -hmm. 008 versus 009. Now, where's, where's Pine Ridge from? Is that up here? Sandy Pines? I thought it was, but I don't know. It might, I can't. Be, part of the, it it might be part of the park. No. This, no? It's was beside it? the park, out off of Carlton Boulevard. So if you went out across from the fireworks place and went straight out. Okay. Well, that's. that's I'm just trying to figure out why they'd be the same size acres, but it's commonly owned. It sounds exactly the same sense. Yeah. Except the parcel number is slightly. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's two parcels out there. Hopefully it's not another mistake. <laughs> Is there a deadline that we I need? I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what this process typically okay. typically is. So I can we can certainly have 
ask clarifying questions. Right. Well, we just don't want to have an error here. Yeah. Could we ask them to just come in next time and explain this to us? Absolutely. Does that make sense? Sure. There, may, there may be a uh, deadline on that, but I'm not sure. I think there is, but I don't know when it is. Oh. All right. So what if there is a deadline that, that's before? That's uh, so the next meeting. Yeah, our next meeting. What do we, what's our plan of action then? I think it's unlikely that there would be okay. a deadline in the middle of October yeah. for that. Right. But if there is, I suppose we could have an emergency meeting. Okay. Oh, that's or a, spe a special meeting. Fit in that well to have an emergency meeting for this. But. Yeah. <laughs> or we could pass it uh, um, provisionally. Contingent on additional information yeah. from them that I could email to you. Is that appropriate? Well, we just, or? It's okay if it's two different parcels, which it looks like it is. It's just suspicious because both it amounts exactly, exactly the same. It looks like it's a type, it could be a yeah. typo or something, which it probably is not. But it's probably not. But so what we could do is we could pass it tonight yeah. just in case yeah. one of us can vote no so that that person is authorized by parliamentary procedure to bring it up, bring up a motion to reconsider at a subsequent meeting. And we can just ask them to come to the next meeting. And if we're satisfied, we just do nothing. And if we are unsatisfied, we can reconsider that motion, assuming that no deadline has passed. Does that make sense? Yeah, let's, let's do that. Okay. Because then if there is a deadline, then it's done. So I'm happy to vote no against it Okay. for form's sake. Okay. So we don't have a motion yet, though. No one's made a motion. No. So that's what we need to do first. Okay. Good point. <laughs> well, the same. I move to uh, to approve the, fall, the changes of assessment to the 2020, 2020, 2022 as build grand list as errors and omissions. Do you want me to read these no, amounts as, of parcels? As no. submitted by the listers. As submitted today. by the listers. It's good enough. Yeah. Okay, good enough. Yeah. I'll second it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Nay. Okay. There are four ayes and one nay. Please let the minutes reflect, uh, reflect that. that I'm voting no for procedural reasons. Okay, that'll work. May I just ask, we had someone join online that's titled iPhone. Could you please identify? That's oh, me. is it you? That's Never me. Mind. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we can see you now, so that's and good. Oh, yeah. So. yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay, so we took care of the addition and we're gonna to move to the road foreman report. You have the floor. All right. County road project update. Yep, the contractor finished all the dirt work today. So both pipes have been in and running water for a while now. And they got the slopes shaped up today and they started doing their seeding and mulching. Uh, they're going to move a bunch of equipment out tomorrow. Uh, I met with Burr today uh, because he had a pretty big impacted area and he was really happy with all the work. Uh, they were going to touch up a little bit of stuff in his driveway. This a bunch of the spoil material they actually added on. Well, this we won't call it added on to their parking lot, but got rid of it there and get it all shaped up. Uh, it was beneficial for everybody, I believe. And uh, the guardrails are supposed to come the middle of this month. It sounded like whenever they had a day where they couldn't be on a job, they were going to come and get those in. And meaning Lafayette, when I say they. Um, and there should have everything shaped up uh, as far as seeded and mulched. Uh, I would say by the end of this week, for sure. Uh, it sounds like they're not going to be around a whole lot tomorrow other than moving some of the big equipment out. And uh, I met with George Wilson at the upper culvert today. He had a few concerns, and we got those taken care of. So that's moving forward very well. Um, and the paving portion of it has got bumped a little bit, but not that bad. Um, if they're going to start doing a little bit of the dirt work at the end of this week. So as far as reshaping of the road, they're going to have to loosen some of it back up. So there's, I believe what I had talked to Tyson, it'll be from Vermont compost up to Powderhorn Glen. So over both of the new culverts, all the way up through to Powderhorn Glen, 
get that shaped up uh, Thursday and Friday of this week. And then hopefully start laying down base coat a week from then. So next Thursday, Friday, which would be the 13th, 14th. Is that right? And then they will continue on. There'll be a little break again and they will continue until they finish is my understanding from the 19th through the 21st. How long have the culverts actually been driven over? Have they been? People the second going? culvert was opened on Friday. This past Friday? So it'll still have at least two weeks before it gets any blacktop on it. Yeah. I, I, I hope the road doesn't settle there. But... Well, that'll be your speed, though. Yeah, this is true. They used a... Uh, oh vibrating compactor on the boom of an excavator to set them to compact oh, everything yeah, yeah it actually is, works really well uh, so they pack right. one excavator and then the other one just keeps chasing him around packing it in it was right. really efficient and it does a really good job oh nice could you say yeah. again what what's that i'm sorry uh, uh could, could you a say lot of lists <laughs> Could you say again what work you expect to be done next uh, this Thursday and Friday? Uh, reshaping, just putting a not want to say a final grade, but getting the actual grade of the road, um, meaning the slope for blacktop, getting it very close right. to pavement uh, or pave. Okay, thank you. Okay, sounds good. And. You also have in your packet, we do have two change orders. Yeah. They're not a surprise. These are the same right. numbers that were presented to you in April. Yeah. It's just a change order was never completed to memorialize that. So assuming the board yeah. recognizes these figures from April, we yeah. need a motion to authorize me to sign those. And then in the warrant packet, you will also see invoices <laughs> connected yeah. to these. Yeah to these change orders for 50%. Um, and Guthrie has already approved that payment as well. Okay. So the total amount is 178,462? For, that is for the Barnes. Okay. Yeah. The Morse is 142,818. So that's the combination of the two. Is he flip the page over and there's the second. Oh, there we go. I think back in April, I just don't think any, I don't think anyone because the project wasn't imminent quite yet, um, did the the change order at the time. So. So this was something that we were notified of in April. And correct. Yeah, it was actually in the. I think it was the. Uh, I think I did. I know. The April fourth uh, select board meeting. Okay, so this is what the, the ones that we previously discussed. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. This, okay. yeah, Good. these increases were already discussed and presented at that time. Right, right. We just didn't do the official paperwork to do the change order. Got it. So this is for for two two different sites. Correct. So, so in the this in is for Morse and for North of Barnes. Okay. For both culverts. So should we do the um, motions now or should we wait? Do you you have anything else, Guthrie? I'm pleased with the work. Uh, I think it came out really well. I I met with George. He was the only one who really had any concerns with either project. I met with him on site tonight and we went over it and they were already taking care of it when we were there. So I really yeah. don't see any problems with anyone's it, everything's look good. We've been working hand in hand with Ryan, uh, with uh, Chase and Chase. That's been great. Um, he's been really good. He has some of the technical numbers, um, timing and things like that, and compaction and everything. So that's yeah, been really good to have him on board. And uh, like I say, everything meets his. He was excited how advanced some of their equipment was. Uh, made the job go a lot quicker. So was he there all the time while they were doing the job? Not the entire time, but he was checking in virtually daily, sometimes twice a day. Okay. I know yesterday he checked in twice. Um, today, I know I saw him there tonight, late, 
and I yeah, and I what well, this morning I met with him too. So he was there twice today as well. Yeah. Okay. You know I me. Mean? The he was there a lot. I'll give him that. What? He what? He was there a lot. Yeah, well that's good. Yeah. Because I remember the stand tech that we hired to do this parking ride. <laughs> They did a really crappy job, and I was kind of wondering how they could do a crappy job when they were there most of the time. It's like, what's the guy doing? You know, smoking cigarettes in his truck, or he you know, wasn't paying attention. So I just was wondering how this went, you know, just because we haven't had such a great experience with other um, project managers or quality control in the past. So it sounds like this is working out. Yeah. I asked... Uh... I asked him if he thought he would be available for assistance on the Cherry Tree Hill so we could at least start talking about that because that project will happen in June of 23. So the very end of this physical year. Okay. The grant project yeah. also. So I don't know if there's room in there or not. <laughs> well, it was the well, town yeah. to do it. So. Yeah. All right, I'll make a motion, motion that the uh, board authorize town administrator Jenkins to sign the two change orders. One is for um, Morse Farm, the culvert there, for $142,818 and site two, um, in north of Barnes Road, for $178,462. I will second that with a specification that those two prices listed are the new adjusted contract prices and not the amount of the change. We have a second on that? Yes. I, I second. Oh, you second? Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Um, and then the next thing we're gonna consider is a winter roads policy. Uh, were there any- Well, while well, we're having a general discussion with Guthrie about road conditions. I'm, I'm just curious, Guthrie, what your assessment is of how the detour traffic has been? <laughs> it's been pretty good um, for the most part. I'm glad it's over. Uh, uh -huh. We That week of drizzly rain virtually every day was not in our favor for having the volume of traffic that we had on our detour. Uh, work through it and everyone i think everyone was once they started you doing the detour i think they were fine with it so uh -huh. i i did get feedback as animal control officer from someone who was walking on the east montpelier trail that has a trailhead on center road um who grew up in town lives in montpelier now and uh, she'd lost her dog uh, uh, that day, but one of the things that really shook her up besides losing her dog was the speed of all the traffic going by, the speed and the amount of the traffic. <coughs> but I told her that was a temporary situation, I thought. Speed has been a consistent complaint across the board yeah. lately. Just when people come into the office and, and oh, yeah. even just general conversation, it, okay. it's we can't quite figure out what's happened, <laughs> but it just feels like everyone has sped up. So it's just an issue that a number of people have commented on. Okay. Not, not just in areas that are hit by the detour traffic. Correct. Okay. And not just on center road. Yeah. Right. Okay. Are the state police been in town? I haven't noticed them. What's that? State police been in town? I haven't seen them. I, I saw them seen. earlier this year down here in, in where the gravels where I've a lot down there a couple mm -hmm. times. It's on my list to take a look at what our expenditures have been. Cause you know, we pay for Vermont state police when they're here, but if they're not here, they only so while we're not really paying an hourly rate for them to be here, we're also not getting that support. So Washington County actually stopped into the office one day related to something going on at the school. Um, and I spoke with them and it, it's kind of on my mind to, I don't, you know, discuss what other options we may have to increase law enforcement presence, if that could help, but a little outside of this conversation, but it's, number, yeah. We might be able to call them and ask them to maybe go uh, right up. Yeah, they said they didn't really have capacity just yet right now, but they were hoping to. They're trying to hire, so yeah. that's one reason I haven't rushed it, because they really couldn't commit to, to much right now, but I think everybody is just law enforcement strapped across the yes. board right now. So yeah, we've called them in the past, and 
and but they were short of help. I, yeah. I just want to clarify what you say the sheriff was here. One, uh, some Washington County um, Deputy. deputies, yeah. yeah and here. did they indicate that they had some capacity to help? Not us yet, out? but no. they were okay. hoping to soon. They, they got at the beginning okay. of the year they would be able to have. So okay. it was something. It is something that is on my mind and that okay. is on my list to bring to the board as uh -huh. a consideration. First, I want to get my head around what it looks like. We've actually been incurring. Um, as far as Vermont State Police, because I think it's important to look at the history, because I think what I'm going to see when I look at kind of year over year history is we're seeing a consistent dip mm -hmm. in the presence that we have in town. And if there is a way for us to increase that, if we could leverage, I know other towns are starting to leverage both Vermont State Police and mm -hmm. like a Washington County, Waterbury's doing it. Um, so it's something I think that we may want to consider. So I know this is a little off topic, but, right. but it does the, the speeding is, is an issue yeah. and, yeah. and it's been commented on across many areas in, in town. Woodbury uh, used the um, Washington County Sheriff's Department quite a bit. And actually I think it had, well, it certainly slowed me down. <laughs> <laughs> no, it makes you a lot more cautious. And I, and, and, and they were pretty regular around Woodbury Lake and, and along 14 on that end because a lot of people would speak through there. So I thought it was, I thought that they were pretty effective there. So um, and I know Guthrie's list has obviously been um, stacked pretty heavy these days, but uh, getting a kind of speed bump, speed table kind of, I know was on his list for Center Road. Um, we had talked about one that you could bolt down and he, you know, nice thing with that, it could be removed for the winter and put back down. Um, mm -hmm. And he kind of liked the idea of that. So it's something that will, I'm sure, be on his list when we get into next year. At this point now, it's yeah, it's getting into winter. So, yeah. So I'd kind of like to finish up the discussion on the winter roads policy. If yes. Um, Scott was here. I would value his input on that. Um, do you want to put any changes on the winter operations plan? I think it worked well as it was last year. So update the dates and that's about it for me. Okay. That it already, we did the sidewalks a couple of years ago. We added those in and same thing. We yeah. haven't really had complaints. So I think it's yeah. fitting for our, for our tax base, if you want to call it that. Okay. Sounds good to me. So I think we need a motion to adopt it. I move that we adopt the Town of East Montpelier 22-23 Winter Operations Road Plan. It would be, oh yeah, right. that's the right date. Yep, perfect. Yeah, I already updated. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it. Like, oh, it that's actually the right assumes date. that you would approve it at the bottom, of course, that, you know, yep. could yes. be changed, but. Right, I'll, I'll second it, but I'm using up all my all my motions second. <laughs> and then, then can you go home after that? <laughs> okay, <laughs> <Can> home. I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One more. One more. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. And I, I would say um, we have new people who move into town and may have different expectations than what we set out in the winter road policy. So I would think, I mean, this is a long thing to post in its entirety on, on Front Porch Forum, but uh, I would suggest that, uh, Gina, you make a post to Front Porch Forum saying, hey, this like board just uh, passed this and link to the website, link yeah. to the place on the website mm -hmm. and mention the statement on town sand and salt pile usage uh, just to kind of sweeten the pot saying, hey, you know, we don't have a bare road policy. Here are the limitations and what you can expect. And by the way, free sand. <laughs> we, we've had trouble with that sand thing in the past. People have dug in there and they were. We've, it's been complaints. pretty good recently. We've got it signed fairly well. So. Oh, good. Because at one point we had to tighten down on that. Because <laughs> people were going and coming in there taking a lot of sand and the road form at that time wasn't happy with what the activity was. Yeah, the statement specifically refers to a few small five gallon pails or similar containers loaded by shovels. That's what the sign says too. Yeah. Okay, I'd like to move on to the discussion of the charge point level two EV charger. Are you all done, Guthrie? Thank yeah, you. I'm all set. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Guthrie. So long, uh, Have a yeah, good you, evening. You can put that policy on along with the agenda for the selection. Sure. There's going to be a lot of stuff there, but sounds good. Um, okay, so I saw...
on the memo, the charge point level to EV charger discussion. Where are we on that? You gotta start charging. So where we are, well, is that essentially at the end, I'm not sure of the specific date, I'll have to ask Bill Powell that, but I think it's the end of November. Um, okay. Washington Electric no longer maintains or controls that charger. Yeah. Um, it becomes the responsibility of the town and we have a few options with that. Um, we could network it and basically char use it and charge people for using it. Um, Bill actually doesn't recommend that. He said it kind of becomes an administrative nightmare um, for very little money in the end of the day. And in fact, pretty much no one's doing it for that reason because the, the administrative costs of maintaining right. that kind of negates any benefit you would have. We could essentially turn it into a dummy network, um, which means that people can use it um, if they have, and Carl can speak a whole lot more intelligently than I can on the specifics in regards to using EV, um, EV, char, EV stations, but um, essentially if they have the right card and yeah. system, they, they can use it. And then lastly, Carl and I had actually discussed um, this already and the there's a lot of issues with that. It rarely seems to work. So Carl and I were discussing whether it even makes sense to have it there. Um, so Bill Powell said that if that was something, if we did want to consider removing it to let him know, cause it's something we could possibly sell um, to someone else. But I know Carl, you were over there testing it. So I'm really curious to know whether it worked for you this evening or not. So it did not work for me this evening. It gave me the same error that's been giving for the past couple of months, which is a new error. Uh, but you know, over the five years that it's been there, I have spent a whole lot of time on the phone with ChargePoint because it would work uh, apparently, but when I plugged it into the car, it would not communicate with the car. And so they'd have to reset it to, to get it to communicate with the car and, and a bunch of assorted errors like that. So, And then for six months or more, I haven't been able to charge it at all over there. And I'm just very irritated with, with dealing with ChargePoint. I did a little bit of research on... Because uh, I saw an article a month ago or so about the number of broken public charging stations around the country and saw a charge point reference as having a very high percentage. I could not relocate that article, but there was a study done in the San Francisco Bay Area earlier this year by somebody at Berkeley who found that on average a quarter of the public fast charging stations were offline in an area that's really interested in electric vehicles and charge point was the worst network offender with 36% of theirs offline. So I talked with Bill Powell a little bit today. He had indicated that he was going to be here at the meeting and, and, you know, may pop in sometime soon, but he, he was against taking it out um, because it costs so much to put it in, but that's sort of the fallacy of sunk costs, I think. Uh, he said it costs $16,500 to buy, uh, but you know, if there's a used market for it, maybe we sure. can get half of that back. Uh, Clipper Creek is a manufacturer of dumb chargers. It's just uh, very simple. You plug it in and there's no network to worry about. And I've never had a problem with a Clipper Creek charger that I've used. It's, if you go to a dealership, a Ford or a Nissan dealership or some other dealership where they have a charger, more often than not, that's what they have. Uh, very simple technology. I was talking to them today about what we could put in there with dual ports and they recommended one of two different models and it'd be about $1,600. So, it would. Uh, it, it's going to cost some money to connect it to uh, to um, have something to put it on, um, to connect it to the electricity there, to take out the uh, the charge point one. But I mean, if we can get eight thousand dollars for the charge point on the used market, if it's worth you know half now of what we paid for it five years ago, then we might even come out ahead. Did we pay the 16? Well, uh, we actually, no. Uh, no we th this is covered by a grant that went right. to Washington Electric. That's right. And I guess they paid the 16, but, but the grant paid for it. Right. So anyway, we, we might come out pretty good. Carl, what so, does the $1,600 one look like? I mean, is it just, like, I'm just picturing like a bare wire or something. That can't be it. <laughs> um, have you seen the ones at Hunger Mountain Co-op? Yeah. It's very That's similar to that. Okay. So the charge point one is hooked into their network. 
And there's no way you can retrofit that one to make it work better or with a different. I'm, I'm not trustful that you can. I mean, right. there, uh, Bill, Bill and I had some trouble communicating today, so I'm not sure what he was trying to say. But at the end, I was asking him, can we just set this up so that anybody can use it without a charge, without a card, without a phone app or anything? And uh, he said he was going to look into that. And he reached out to the charge point rep here. But what I know of is over in Barry behind the restore, the resource there, yeah. there is one that's been there for, I don't know, uh, since I've had my vehicle and probably five years or more before that. And the entire time it's been off network. So it's a charge point one, it's, but it's off network. It's not, it's not on the charge point map, I don't think. And much of the time you can use it anyway, but you have to have either your charge point card or your RFID card or the phone app to make it work. Uh, for a while, it was not working with the card, but it would work with a phone app. The last time I was there, it wouldn't work with either of them. So it's just a pain in the butt. Whereas the, the uh, Clipper Creek one is just simple. Yeah. Uh, you have to, you know, at the Nissan dealership, they uh, have a circuit breaker that it's connected to turned off when they're not there and they have that box locked. Uh, so it doesn't work then, but as long as there's electricity to it, it works. But do you have to pay? Is there a meter device on that? There's no for? meter device. So we would okay. have to you know, make an basically irrevocable decision that we're going to stick by our previous decision not to charge people for it on the grounds that the administration of it would it's cost more than right. it would be more. bringing in revenue. Hello, Bill. Carl Hello, Bill. And, and board, good evening. Hello. Hello. We were just talking about the charger over there, trying to decide what to do with it. The charge point EV level two, whatever it is. So you have an opinion, I, I'm sure. Um, I don't, I'm here to answer questions oh, if don't? I can. Yeah. Well, we're just saying it doesn't seem to work very well. So we're wondering if we should take it out. Retrofit it, maybe. Yeah. Well, I was wondering I, if you could retrofit it, but I, I was just I was just um, talking about a Clipper Creek option bill that I looked at after you and I talked earlier today. Uh, there is a similar capacity charger with the dual ports for Clipper Creek that goes for about sixteen hundred dollars, and you know there'd be some associated cost to uh, tear out the charge point one and install the Clipper Creek one, uh, but it's cost new about one tenth of what the uh, the charge point one cost. And in my experience with Whipper Creek, they always work. As long as they have electricity, they work. Any thoughts on that? I, I have no objection. It's your station in two months. Uh, there needs to be a decision. If that's your decision, I'd support that. Absolutely. Whatever you guys want. There's no skin in the game for whack. Um, you know, the, if the usage is as, as it is, you know, it's a small potato. Uh, I shared with both Gina and Carl some information about how much the lights in the parking lot use and what the relative kind of share of the power to the charger at this point is de minimis. So whatever you want to do to low, lower your cost of operation, I think it's a fine idea. And I have no objection about Clipper Creek. It's a fine product. So the $690 fee, if we keep that, that's what it's going to cost us. That would be for uh, a that's, that's the charge. That's the charge. Whatever. That's if we want to charge monetary. Oh, I charge see. People money okay. to use it. So if we just kept it there, but do, do, we, do we have well. do we have any records as to how many people use it or how frequently it has been used over the years? Nothing that it, that I am aware of specifically. There's a dashboard that collects those data, but I haven't been on it, so I can just estimate. I would say sharing today with Carl and previously with Gina some data from March, April, and May, the three uh, earlier months this year, I would say it probably had a half a dozen, maybe 10 cycles over three months, probably uh, 80, 60, 80 kilowatt hours. That's a guess, but you know it's de minimis compared to what the rest of the lighting, what the rest of the use in the in the park and ride is. Not very much. Yeah, well, it's, it might be used more if it works. Right. I was just about to say it's also tough to gauge, and that I think that's when Carl and I spoke to. I, it's tough when it's not working. Right. I don't know. I, that would frustrate me if I were driving through and saw yeah. that, and then pulled in and. It and, didn't work. And the other thing you got to think about is the future. Yeah, exactly. though. That we're going to have more electric vehicles. Yes. And people will be using it more. Yeah. So 
It, we got to think about that. Yeah. Yes. So I think we should have one that works <laughs> easily. I think we should get rid of that one. It's a pain in the ass. Excuse my English. And get one, like you said. I think that makes sense too. It does to me. Yeah. Why would you keep something just like rusting out in the element? I mean, well, it's not doing probably anything. not rusting out, but it's it doesn't, not, do it doesn't work very well. Yeah. And the history that Carl's given us is they don't work well across the country. Mm-hmm. Historically, they don't work well. So mm-hmm. if we can get rid of it and and then put one in that works, I think that's a good public service. Yeah. I mean, as yet, it's kind of acting as a coat rack or something. Like, literally, it's just standing. Yeah. Like nobody's been able to. But in this age of increasing use of electric sure. vehicles and climate change, et cetera, <laughs> we, really just, <laughs> we really should put something in that works and look into the future. Yeah. I mean, that's just the way it works. Yeah. That should be. Mm-hmm. So that's what I would support. I Probably don't know in you. Um, I guess not, not today. No, I think before we make a motion, we should have a more specific proposal. I do too. So who, who's going to do that? Um, I guess I can work with, um, Dave Roberts is the guy who's in charge of drive electric Vermont, uh, which is in charge of promoting electric vehicles. I reached out to him after Gina and I talked, uh, but he was away on vacation until today. Uh, I didn't want to bother him on his first day back. So I will give him a few more days and then reach out to him and uh, figure out the best way forward. Um, I guess if we're going to have work done there, I guess electrical work, we wouldn't go to, to the road crew with. We would no. have to find our own contractor. <laughs> yes. for, yeah. Okay. So it's a park and ride. But well, WEC might have a contractor. That yeah. They work Abs- with. Absolutely, okay. Seth. I'm glad to help if I can uh, provide some contacts locally. I turn to our neighbor. Dan Cowan, who uh, is usually a very, he's a very aware of Cl- Clipper Creek and other products. So I'm sure he'd take that on. And we should look at it and see if we can get that thing taken out and what it's worth. Right, right. Salvage value, put yep. that towards, like you said. Yeah, so. but basically I, w- I was looking at it tonight and I think the best thing to do is to take out the existing one and put the new one in in exactly the same place. Oh, yeah. Just in terms of where it is in, uh, in relationship to the um, parking spots. Yeah. And also there are two nice posts there that are set up to prevent anyone from driving into it. Oh, yeah. We want them out at the same place. It's yeah. less disruptive and it's cheaper. Yeah. yeah. So plus you're already connected to the power there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, Okay. That sounds good to me. Okay. Sounds great. So I will. Anything else, Bill? No, just let me know if I can help. Um, I'm glad to talk uh, through Gina if that works, but otherwise, uh, good yeah. luck. Glad to stand by. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, are you okay to move ahead? <clears throat> Capital Reserve Fund discussion. I think I've heard some rumblings about two people that want to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right now, you each have seven and a half minutes, and then that's it. <laughs> You've already used up like two of our minutes. I did not use two minutes. You have a really bad timer, <laughs> so I will remind you of that. <laughs> just, just quickly, we had a meeting what last week was it? And um, there was a couple of things that came up, and had Gina had put in an application, what was it called an application, a survey. I forget what it's called. Whatever. Yeah. Um, for doing Request. some uh, requested for doing some work and using capital reserve money for doing some work in here, painting for office furniture, just kind of making some improvements to the office. So I don't want to forget that. So we need to talk about that. But um, the, the the committee asked me just to just come in and just mention to you that you know we've talked about the town garage, we talked about the town offices, we haven't done anything really yet. Um, and um, so I just made a list of things here. So. So we want to plan, we should start the planning process for replacement of the town garage and, and, and the town office. I think we need to determine which one is a priority. The garage. Yeah, but I just need to know why. I think people out there will want to know why. Well, they can hardly even fit the equipment. Right. I think my that's why I'm asked. That's why too small. My head goes, number one, I mean, I'm in this office every day. So I mean, while this office may be a little tight, I think with some new furniture and just giving this office a little TLC will carry us well into the future. Um, the garage I view is a public safety, you know, Mm -hmm. that, that crew is what's keeping our town and our roads safe. And right now what they have is doesn't really meet their needs. So that's why I say that I believe the town garage as the resident and the administrator. Replacement of this 
has not been a priority. It's just working. And also because it's significant cost to replace it. Mm -hmm. And we're paying the bond on the fire station. Mm -hmm. So while I've been on the select board as long as I have, we've talked about it, but we haven't really, you know, hey, we've got a big bond to pay off over there. Right. Just not rush things. This is working. Mm -hmm. The town garage we've discussed, and I'm happy to be part of that discussion, but it's too small. The equipment's bigger. They have more equipment. Yep. It just doesn't serve the needs very well. So we've also got this lot down here that we'll be acting on, and that could be part of the town garage network of buildings. So there is a lot to talk about. So the yeah, garage. the issue with town garage, we don't know where it would be. We don't know um, where we find if we use town land or if we have to purchase land somewhere. So we don't know what that cost would be. Um, we don't really have an idea how big it would want, but somebody ought to throw that number out, you know. And I was thinking that maybe it's, it's time to recharge the the um, town garage committee and sit down and actually get some milestones, put together a, you know some dates when you need when you'd have it, some of this planning done. And um, you know, first of all, you got to figure out where where you could possibly have the place built. A place. But we didn't envision moving it from the same location. We did envision doing some work at the site. So, okay, but that's just, do you think yeah. that we could put together the committee again and then have them come back with a report? Yeah. Um, and with some ideas where the location might be, if you choose to have it at the same location, um, mm -hmm. how you would work around um, building a new garage when you, when, and, yeah. and, and storing your equipment and everything when you have, a, when, when you have the, new, the old garage gone, yeah. theoretically, that sort of thing. Yeah. They can build a garage pretty fast, you know. Yeah, I know we can do it at the time of year when you wouldn't actually have to have it. You know, right. we, there, there's ways, there's workarounds. I, I built a in Hardwick. I built a um, a twenty five thousand square foot shed, mm -hmm. and we had Lodge and S Construction do it, and they had it done in uh, a couple months. Yeah, so it was easy. The, the committee that we had on the town guard was Guthrie, myself, and two other select board members, and both those members aren't um, on the board anymore. So it was just Guthrie and I are left. So we'd have to get somebody else on the committee. Okay. So, um, so anyway, um, so then I agree. I, I think I agree that the town office is to wait. The town office would be one way would be easier because you already have a site and you could do an engineering study to figure out which, you know, for water, wastewater, and for permitting and just get that underway. But I don't think you necessarily have to do it right now. I think it's probably more important to do the town garage and maybe look at coming up with a plan maybe in the spring. Yeah, we can do that. I mean, yeah, I think that it'd be very quick to get to the engineering part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of where we're at before. Is you, then you got to go to an engineer or something like that. Uh, and that's that was going to cost some money. Um, but I guess, you know, one of the options is ARPA money would qualify for that. But I don't know if that's something we want to use it for. I'm just putting that out there. And I had taught, I think I put in here the potential for using ARPA funds if possible. Mm -hmm. But um, we also talked about. The um, either doing an actual set aside in the capital budget for the town garage replacement, maybe even for the um, town office replacement, even if it's just a nominal amount of money, but put some money in there. And um, I don't know what else I was going to say with that, but that's that's what I would recommend that we do. Or we can use the opportunity, or they said we could use the opportunity fund money that's yeah. in there but if you do use the opportunity fund money there's nothing really allocated for it you have to go in and grab it take it where yeah. if you could set aside some money and start setting aside some money you would have that earmarked for that product right. and it would be likely it would stay there but the ARPA money could be used for the engineering side right so what so that's just one of the options that we can put out when we do the you know survey or whatever so how do we how do we move forward for that uh the the garage we have to get some people on the committee. I mean, I'm willing to be on it with Guthrie. You have to have Guthrie on. And I'm willing to do it, but we just don't have anybody else. There's just two of us that are left from that original committee. And we went up there, had a couple meetings, kicked some ideas around, and that's as far as it went. <laughs> I hate to volunteer. <laughs> you don't have to. Come on, like every committee. Every He's committee. so good at it, though. Yeah, like, no. You have experience with it. I mean, you, you would just, it's just such a natural fit. Oh, thanks. <laughs> We, we would just have to go up there. <laughs> we, I mean, basically, it's almost at the engineering part. We just, the, the, the real important thing is to find a spot. If you're, and, but you're saying that you, we'd have to say, okay, we're going to build it right where it is. We're going to tear down the other That was my impression when we, had, we talked about it, but 
my thought was we need to do something with that fire station up there because that's kind of right there. And I'm like, can the fire station come down? That's what I'd like to do. But. Well, see, they were already starting to get some answers here, some ideas. Well, we can go up and look at it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, so the committee should go up there and talk about that. We, we already have, but we need to talk about okay. it. Okay, so um, we probably won't make any decisions on, on the set aside for that, but we need to keep, we need to have this thrown back on the agenda again so we can talk about either using the opportunity fund, using ARPA money, or having an, a line item set aside for each one of those projects. Yeah, we can't really use the ARPA money until we get the go ahead from everyone to what well, we're gonna use our ARPA right. money. For. Right. And that's so that's a little ways away, but we it's an option. So are we gonna go out on front porch forum and ask for volunteers for a town garage committee? We could. Sure. Think you'll get any nibbles? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll help you with it if you want. Help me what? Put it on front porch forum? No, I'll help you. Know, <laughs> I'll be on the committee. Yay. So it'll be three of us. That's all we really need. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we our numbers are better than me. <laughs> you can all vote against me. Yeah. What, exactly. <laughs> one thing that occurred to me with Bill Powell right here is uh, in terms of taking down the the whole thing and and reconstructing it. Yeah. Uh, the WEC equipment shed is just right down the road there, and I have never been there except during annual meeting when they have cleared everything out. So I have no idea how near capacity they are. They might be completely full, mm -hmm. but it might be worth checking in with them to see if they have bays that could be used for some of our equipment during garage reconstruction. He's on the facilities committee for Central Moscow Waste District too, and I'm on the committee with him. Yeah, okay. So, well, let's, let's first have a meeting up at the town garage. Yeah. And, I agree. And then we'll yep. get an action plan together. Okay. And there's one other thing we need to talk about though. Um, we want to, it's up to the psych board if you're going to reallocate money from the capital fund to do some maintenance items here, major maintenance items. Okay. No, wait a minute. I want to ask you about that because we have money in there for maintenance. The 19,000, you think that's enough to do what you want to do? Is it 19 or 29? 19, right? It was, there was a budget in 2022 to spend 19,400 yeah. on this building. And what? Nothing was done. Right. Yeah. Money. All right. So, but you, I mean, if you, but, but if, if, can she overexpend that or we need to allocate some more money for that? Oh, I don't know how much we're talking. Painting is a lot. It costs you a lot to have painting done these days. Depending on what you do. In cart, you probably getting, look at we're getting flooring. furniture quotes. Jess is working on that mm -hmm. now that she's on board. Um, honestly, that's mostly been challenging just to find people well, we to come give back you with numbers. Figures, sure. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds we'll good. Yeah, that's what, we're, that's what we'll plan to do as it relates to And see if it's going to expand If it doesn't, we can reallocate some funding to that to help out with yeah. it. Okay. So, so you're saying there there was a budget item for the FY22 annual budget there for that that was not used? Correct. It capital, isn't it? Yeah, it was in the capital plan. There I were, thought it was money every year that was put in. Um, I don't want. know if it was said there could be some every yeah, year. Every year sure. it, it, this appeared to be money that it was intended to be spent in 22. Okay. It was, so actually, was it in the 2022 budget itself or was it in the capital plan with a notation to spend it in 2020? It was in the capital plan with a notation okay. to spend it 2022. Okay. But okay. that must be accumulated over a few years because I thought it was like $3,500 a year that we put in there. Yeah. It's 19 grand. Yeah. But 19 grand is because we hasn't spent it. Right. So let's spend it. <laughs> okay. This huh. this report appeared to be like it was planned expenditures for yeah, they, they, it wasn't necessarily the accumulation, it was an like intent to spend, which is why the external auditors actually questioned what was planned that didn't happen. It's mm -hmm. the same budget that's in for paving for road work uh, that's earmarked. I'm picturing the town plan. I just don't have it in, right. in, in front of me or not the town plan, the annual report. Yeah. Um so the auditors had questioned what that was, and there was really no plan for yeah. what to be. They do that because they spent. want to know if you know what you're going to do with that money. Yeah. Like that's, came up with there the was idea. never any discussion of spending $19,000 last year or this year or whatever. No, it's, it's probably accumulated. It's accumulated. Yeah, yeah I know it is. Yeah. I know it is because we're putting a certain amount in every year. But there is and a, it was only three or $4,000. And we just, we just haven't spent it. And there's some notes, I think, in there about... What it could potentially we did spend some money on the heat pump, though. right? That was part of it, yeah. <clears throat> so, let me state, if I may, my understanding of the relationship between the budget that the voters approve each year in yep. March and the capital 
budget. Uh, mm -hmm. As I understand it, we've got the separate fund of money, the capital fund, yep. and that is that has um, milestones for when we should be spending on what things and that plan. It's a plan. It's a plan. Yes, yeah. and and that dictates how much we ask the voters each year to put into the capital fund. But when it comes to actually making the expenditures from the capital fund for those projects, we don't put that into the annual budget and ask the voters that year to approve no. it. We just, they've already approved exactly. funding the capital right. fund and we can make the decision to spend in 22 or 23 or 24, yes. $19,000, yeah. for right. example, on, on a, uh, improvements here. We, we, we're not held to spending that yeah. amount of money that year. Yeah. The plan is a tentative plan. Mm -hmm. We can't right. spend that right. money. It's just right. like the paving. We just put that much money yep. in the paving thing every year. Right. And that's a way to keep the tax rate consistent <clears throat> yep. without these big spikes and dust, which is always a consistent yeah. amount that we put in there, right. Right? which has worked really well. Yeah. Yep. So, okay. so that, right. And that's what select like boards do. Yeah. Allocate funding. Well, the, well, wait a minute. Not all select, not all select boards treat capital expenditures the same way. Oh, I know that. Right. So some of them vote, bring it to the town people at town meeting to vote for a truck, to vote for this and this. This is just a different way of handling it. Yeah. That we have a capital plan. They voted to put the money in the capital plan and they know that we can spend it on X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. So that's just the way that we're doing. Right. I don't know how hard we do it. They do set aside money to buy trucks every eight years to buy a brand new truck with cash. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, we we've done for, we're doing it for two years. So, and so that's it's because the same thing. Yeah. <clears throat> Good towns do set aside money. Yeah. Do that so you don't have to borrow money, and then you yeah. can set, then you can use that money to gain interest and help even out all the big spikes. Right, because you're not right. going to go ask for a half a million dollars one year right. and 50000 next year. Right. Perfect. You've got the money already there. Yeah. And this, this is where we come up with a payment plan and we can afford to pave because we've got the money already there. Right. We yeah. don't have to go borrow the money, which they did in yeah. years previous. Mm -hmm. When I got on the site before that, they had been borrowing money. Yeah, they've got a bond. Yeah. A bond for everything. For, for the payment. <clears throat> but now we, we have a better plan. That's what we do. It. I, yeah. I agree with that totally. Yeah. So anyway, Whatever that means. Um, but we still have a few more minutes to talk about the capital plan and we haven't heard from Gina very much. I don't really have an excessive amount to say. I mean, what we're wanting to do to the office is simply make it yeah, what we'd more like comfortable to do is for, especially this current staffing plan. This office was not designed for the staff that's in it today. Um, so we're working on ideas and getting some numbers to bring some plans yep. and whatnot to the select board to see what we can and can't do. And this is where the select board can help guide me on that process of using these funds. So you just need to come with us to come forth with us with ideas and dollar signs attached to those. Mm -hmm. So we welcome that. There you go on that. As a side note, as it relates to ARPA, I have had some conversations with the, well, the ARPA rep, Katie Buckley with the LCT. And she said what just, I'm just throwing this out there for you all, what some towns are, one approach they're kind of taking is she said that some towns are taking the approach that, you know, the select board was elected to yeah. make decisions on behalf of the town. There are certain things she said, especially there's a lot of money being spent on town facilities right now. Yeah. She said that there are needs that have been on the back burner for many towns over many years. So the select board's kind of taking their ARPA funds, taking a portion of it and saying, we know these are things that we need to do for our town infrastructure. So we're gonna put this to the side and say, this is going to help fund town office, town garage, yeah. improving the town's infrastructure. Then we're going to go out to the general public with this bucket of money and solicit ideas. So I just wanted to mention that to you all, that that's yeah. some feedback that I've gotten yeah. that was suggested to mention to you that maybe don't consider it as its entire, you know, bucket, you know, similar to CD fiber, you know, because yeah. she was thrilled when I told right. her we carved out funds for CD fiber. And, yeah. You know, and she said, that's exactly what I mean. She goes, you know, the board knows there are things that need to be done. She goes, the fact is a lot of your town residents, they may not 
they may never even step foot into some of your facilities. They've never been in the town garage. They've never been in the town office. She goes, they're probably not the best people to make the, the direct decision of that's where the money needs to go. She said, that's what your select board knows, what the town's infrastructure is and what those needs may right. be. Then you go, she yeah. said, the vast majority of it, of course, is going to be essentially put out to gain ideas from the, from the general public of what they want to do. But so I just wanted to mention that to you that that was yeah seems to be the way some towns and that, that's kind of how I feel about it. But you know I'm not I don't think everyone's like board feels the same way. So I was just I I I like the idea of town facilities. It's a chance to <laughs> get some money that we ordinarily wouldn't have to put in our town facilities, which we already know we need. Like the town garage needs it. That's mm -hmm. our biggest facility in town that needs desperately. So that's, but you know, not everyone feels the same way. So that's where that, I agree. So anyway, so we don't have to discuss the capital fund anymore because we're right on time. <laughs> yeah, I've lost the time. <laughs> but you're you're making your time. I don't know about that. You really is. You're probably your neck doesn't turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody else in the capital reserve discussion? Okay. Um, Regional Planning and Transportation Advisory Committee Town Representative. Who's that? Oh. Frank Pratt. Oh, Frank Pratt, yep. Came and spoke with me last week, and um, he has decided that he would like to step away um, from his role as a town representative um, on the Regional Planning, the Transportation Advisory Committee. I haven't, other than getting that information with him, haven't done anything with that. He was going to email um, his contact there, you know, and, and let, I think it was a, she, um, know that, that he would no longer be participating. So I'm coming to the board. I don't honestly know what this particular committee does. And before I started digging, I thought I would bring this to you tonight and get your thoughts and ideas. I don't really know what the committee does either. I knew he was the representative, but I don't really know what he does. does any, can anybody? Well, I know that when we were doing talking about the intersection and this and that, Frank was pretty active in representing the town uh, to the state when we're doing that planning mm -hmm. on the intersection. But since then, I don't know. Yeah. I, haven't yeah, seen I, I, mean, I think they help with long range planning. And I think it's important to have someone representing the town to look out for the town's interests in terms of planning and funding. Um, so that's kind of a general that's my general understanding but i think it's an important position and i definitely think we'd want to get someone in to replace him who has energy and interest in it yeah i agree the central vermont regional planning commission puts together a regional plan which is intended to tie in with the town plans in the area and transportation is one of the areas of the regional plan and the PAC uh, advises on the content of, of that part of the regional plan. So yeah, I agree with Judith. We, we should have someone who represents our interests. So um, does Frank have any ideas about potential replacements? He did not. Oh, because it says here, T.A. Jenkins is best potential replacement for, oh, not with, with Mr. Pat, but Steve. for him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got no idea. you all had any ideas. Nope. Um, <laughs> no, no, next step. And then my next steps would be to essentially reach out. He did give me the last packet of paperwork that he had from the last meeting. So I was planning to find a contact there, reach out to them, See what does, kind of information that I can glean about what the committee does, and then go to front porch forum. Yeah, and you know, but I think it's important to. I need to be armed with a little bit of information before I do that. Um, do you feel sufficiently armed? Forum. Not yet, okay. but I will go get some information <laughs> because you know, of course, people want to know what exactly no. this is doing. So, well, how many times a year do they meet? I mean, what's the deal? And. The person would have to be a town um, resident, I would yeah. assume. Yeah. Uh, and how many meetings a year? And that's all the information I would need to go get mm -hmm. before attempting to put anything out on front porch yeah. form. So Frank think, can give you some. Do you think Frank would be willing to write up a, a post saying, "Here are the wonderful things you can do in the uh, pack"? Possibly. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. 
can you ask him how many meetings a year and how many? Well, that's, I mean, I can reach, I was going to reach out to the committee directly to get some information. Yeah. You have a committee. Um, well, I have the packet that he gave okay. me, so I haven't really had time to dig into okay. it, but I do have the packet of information. Okay. So maybe you can give us some more information the next meeting mm -hmm. and then we can discuss the path forward. It's not, I don't think it's very often. Mm -hmm. No. They have the same thing. St. John's Fair. I think we need more information before we can advertise a front porch form, whatever we yeah. want. To oh, absolutely. Yeah. So that's what we need. Okay. Uh, okay. Discussion on, oh, health insurance option. Boy, didn't they go up? 19 something percent, right? Am I reading that right? Yeah, 19.72%. Yeah, usually somebody does come, but it's, you know. They laid it out there and gave us a nice chart, so it's not what really nice. Do? They manage it? Brokers. Brokers. Yeah, yeah we've, we've had them. I, yeah. I do on my farm, too. I've reached out to Hickok and Fordman. We, we just went straight right to the... Right to the... Um, uh, vendor? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and usually take whoever provides the best deal. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we have too. Yeah, it looks like the same. Deal. It looks like pretty much the same, but they must charge a little bit for doing something. Do they handle the the claims? They didn't charge me anything, but I don't know. Do how they it. handle the claims? No, they don't do anything but just give you the numbers and then you pay them. I don't think that. No, no we didn't pay them yeah. directly. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, maybe they're just helping you guys out as a service. Maybe they're just a broker. Oh, good. That's when they help me on my insurance that I have on my farm yeah. employees. They, we just call them up and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Send us emails. They didn't charge us anything. I'm just wondering. I didn't, yeah. yeah didn't a lot of times with brokers, they're paid by the insurance, insurance company. So, so MVP I, is still a slightly better deal. So I wasn't yeah. sure. I mean, I read the minutes and the memo and whatnot from last year. Yeah. And it seemed like a lot of comparisons were made against Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Of yeah. course, everyone at this point is on M MVP. Yeah. Um, so I'm well, bringing this to you now. It technically came to you last year at the next select board meeting, but I'm bringing it now because obviously the it, it has increased quite a bit. So wow. I really don't know how the board wants me to proceed. What information do you need? What how would you want to look at this? Because again, when I read through everything last year, it was just comparing back to Blue Cross and Blue Shield. There was really not so a lot of information have, of how you evaluated this. We usually have a packet and it's got a few pages of different plans, a silver plan, a bronze yeah. plan. You have that here. Yeah. Yeah. The platinum plan. Yeah. And we had it for each uh, vendor. So it'd be Blue Cross, Blue yeah. Shield or MVP. Yeah. That's and that's what we've received. Yeah. So and that's you. what's in your packet for okay. tonight. So, oh, right here, yeah. you know, and we're then, on, we're currently on the MVP. I put standard platinum because it's a, they have the standard plans and non-standard plans. So we're on the MVP standard platinum plan. It is going up just under 20% from one year to the next. Wow. Um, last wow. year, the motion was written that the town was paying essentially the MVP. I think it was written was covering the MVP plan, which was 92% of the cost of the blue cross and blue shield plan this year. That's now 98%. They're almost neck and neck at this yeah. point now. Um, the current stipend last year was set as it said it was 50% of the blue cross and blue shield, but it, I think that was a, a typo. It was actually, I think 50% of the MVP plan because that math works closer um, so the current stipend is $4,869, applying that same math to this year, it would be increased to $5,822 per year. Um, 20% increase, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, we did that. That was the first time we adjusted the stipend in years. Yeah. But we did that because we thought it was more fair. Uh, I don't, I think Judith was against that, actually. You were. Because you didn't think that we should be giving a stipend. Not trying to put you on the spot. I was just rehearsing. well. No, this is a conversation I want to be having yeah. because I I honestly started to delve into this a lot, and I was yeah. looking at it this weekend right. and pouring over it and thinking if we go to the gold plan and have people pay if they want to go to the platinum. But the problem with, that you get into with that, yeah, it's it honestly becomes a wash for the employee in a lot of cases, you know, because to go to the gold plan. 
then no, they're that's... still paying because now they have to pay more to hit the deductible. Right. Right. Your out-of-pocket maximum right. increases dramatically. Right. So that's why I just needed guidance from you on what is your typical approach. Is you know last year I think you only went up about one. It was one and a half percent. So right. we're in a different situation this yeah. year. And right. I was initially approaching this from a corporate view, which is not how we tend to approach things here. So I just paused and wanted yeah. to hear what you had to say tonight. Yeah. So. Um, I would say what we've done in the past is we have tried to offer as much choice to the employees as we could while setting things up so that it was very clear uh, to us which choice uh, a person would probably want to make, but not force them in to do it. So they have the choice of MVP versus Blue Cross. They have the choice of the various levels of Actually, plans. last year they were not given a choice of levels in the memo that I found. They were given the choice of MVP Platinum or Blue Cross and Blue Shield Pat, Platinum and paying the portion. The memo that Bruce actually provided right. was oh, really? highly limited. That's correct. No. Okay. That's, yeah. That's correct. That okay. Yeah. In, in previous years, then, uh, my memory yeah. is that we've said we will pay this amount and you know you can choose a, a lower price um, option, uh, but um, that, that's your choice. Um, maybe we decided to take a firmer hand last year. It sounds like. Well, um, his his memo, I, I actually yeah. have it. Um, okay. Yeah, his memo only provided that they had two options. Uh -huh. And that, that so. sounds like a more reasonable idea. Ju Judith was trying to say something. Just looking at the the comparison doesn't compare the benefit to uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield to um, MVP. It compares. MVP existing to the renewal option. I'm wondering, or maybe I missed that. I'm wondering if we have, I know we have separate um, kind of an outline of MVP and then a separate one for Blue Cross and Blue Shield, but not a side-by-side -side comparison. And that might be too difficult. This so just way, yeah, this is the way it was provided last year as well. I think to do that comparison you're talking about would be manual to take these okay. two and put them against each other. Are you talking about comparing Blue Cross Blue Shield and to MVP this year? So platinum MVP, yeah, right, right, platinum right, right, right. Blue Cross right. Blue Shield. In what's the yeah, in terms of the benefit, not necessarily the cost. Because that's I, right. I'm, I'm trying to recall last year. I know that MVP probably made more sense because it was, well, it was measurably less expensive, and I think that we, you know, maybe were satisfied that the benefit was comparable. But I, I haven't looked at the benefit. Com I haven't compared the benefit yet of MVP. What, whether or if the renewal option to Blue Cross Blue Shield, just because um, MVP now is so much closer in cost to, you know, it's ninety eight percent of Blue Cross Blue Shield, and Blue Cross Blue Shield might be better. I don't know. I haven't done that comparison, and um, I would just want to give the best bang for the buck. Um, to our folk, um, whatever that is. I don't know what that is yet, but. Um. And I can ask it, Hickok and Boardman if they have anything that does that. Mm -hmm. Well, we've done that. We did that last year. We looked at the benefits that the employee would get in each. They're plan. pretty similar. Yeah. That's what know, Bruce had told me. Was it was quite similar got. and it seemed like they would not have to pay um, the increased premium it was a better bang for them. We could pay the whole thing and they wouldn't have to pay anything. And it was still less money for the town mm -hmm. and they were getting good coverage and um, they didn't have to pay anything out of pocket or as far as premium goes. So we liked doing that for them and that they didn't have to pay any premium. Now the years before they have had to pay some premium mm -hmm. with blue cross blue shield. They were paying, you know, 10% or whatever it was. I can't remember. But that's only if they wanted to stick with Blue Cross, exactly. not if they went to, right. and I don't so, think anybody did, did they? No. Everyone is on MVP. Yeah. Everybody's on MVP and yeah. everyone's been happy with the coverage that I know of. I haven't heard any haven't complaints. Heard any so one but, of the values of having somebody from Hickok and Boardman come in and have this conversation yeah. with us is that they can answer questions like the one that Judith right. asked, and they can also answer uh, in the initial years when we considered MVP, there were pretty significant differences in the network right. available yeah. to people, and yes. those leveled out. Uh, yeah, that's so gone that, away. That's pretty yes. much gone away. Right. And also, um, she was able to tell us that um, everybody's satisfied with MVP, right. and yeah. that was valuable for us to, to know. 
So but, I mean, if, we, if we had her in again, or, that would be very helpful. But, but the other thing that's, that we need to think about is that in the past, we've had employees pay a portion of the premium. I'm not advocating for that because I think in with the competitive mm -hmm. uh, labor mm -hmm. around your needs for labor, to, for road crew mm -hmm. to go to other places, it's attractive for our um, workers mm -hmm. to have them uh, have us pay the premium. Yep. They don't have to pay any premium. That's a big benefit. Huge. So I'm, I'm not advocating they pay that. I'm just saying that in the past, they have had to pay a portion right. of it. But I, I would strongly recommend that we still cover the whole premium. Me I think too. it's a great benefit. Yes. And that's why we keep employee retention. Yes. It's an expectation at this point. I mean, it's a good expectation. It is. Yeah. It's a great benefit. Yes. I urge that we keep doing it. Um, we will keep our road crew happier if we do it. If it's we very cover. tough to go back from. Yeah, you can't. It's hard to go back. To it's just that this is a huge increase. Yes, twenty percent. Understand that's yeah. That's mm -hmm. where my believe me. I've been spinning this around in my head a lot since these numbers came in. But I think the next step should be we should compare plans as Judith suggested. If we could have someone come up mm -hmm. from Hickok Boardman, mm -hmm. doesn't cost us anything. We should we should have that discussion. And the deadline is December first, probably. I think I think it starts in November. They tell you oh, it starts November. November, but I haven't really figured out when it ends. So I haven't gotten into all those questions yet. But um, but yeah. So I, I'm looking at this um, Blue Cross Blue Shield versus MVP, and they do do some comparisons. I mean, in the goal plan, individual family. Uh, it, uh, I think deductible is fourteen hundred to twenty eight hundred, and then over here it's um, for Blue Cross is twelve fifty. And you, they talk. You're looking at this one, man. Yeah, Which one are you looking at? I'm looking at both, comparing them across. I'm yeah. looking at the standard plan on the right side of the MVP, and I'm looking at the gold plan um, for Blue Cross Blue Shield. It also talks about. Um, you know, visits to your primary care physician. Um, one plan charges you $20. That's, that's uh, Blue Cross. But then the goal plan for, for um, hold on here, for MVP, I think it allows you to go to your primary care physician for three visits for zero cost, and then there's a deductible afterwards. So there are some comparisons. You don't have to write all this stuff down. And there's, so there's some comparisons right there. Yeah, you can just eyeball this and go, and just keep in mind that the staff is currently all on yeah. an MVP platinum right. plan. Right, yeah, yeah. So there's also a concern that if we deviate from that plan, there is more out of pocket yeah. that the, the employees will have to bear. So yeah. just keep that in mind. We are theoretically starting to charge them. Yeah. So it's just we change the plan. It's just a so, setup differently. They have they have their comparisons. It's their their yeah everything up above on on Blue Cross Blue Shield and then MVP. All oh, right, it runs down the side this way. So yeah, but there are some major comparisons there if you want to look at. Them. You yeah. have that, Judith? Yeah, no, I'm looking at it now. I just yeah. So the standard plan is what you're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. On, on the plan. Plan. No. So we're on, if we're I'm on interpreting this standard. correctly in light of our previous conversations about this, I think what this is saying is that the benefits for both MVP and Blue Cross for platinum would be the standard one according to the exchange and for the gold, it would be the standard one according to the exchange. And then it's only the rates that we need to compare. But I would I would want to get Hickok and Boardman's confirmation of that before making decisions on that basis. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit different, but not major, not major differences. The PC being able to go to your primary care physician three times without having a copay is pretty good for people. I mean, it'll only be sixty dollars for three mm -hmm. visits, but still, that's a pretty good. That's not a bad deal. Mm -hmm. So that, and that's MVP. Mm, I, I think both. Of, I think these are both. MVP, this is platinum on the left, it's gold on the right. Yeah. My interpretation is that it's for both of them. Are we looking at the same? No, thing? but I'm, this is what I'm looking. No, I'm comparing. No, I'm looking at this, but I'm comparing a different page. I'm okay. comparing the MVP across with the same headings that would be for yeah. Blue Cross Blue Shield. Okay. I'm comparing yeah. directly to Blue, Blue These Cross Blue Shield. Okay. Here's but what, what he's saying is doctor, here's what you pay for urgent care. So that's yeah. comparing what does MVP platinum yeah. cover yeah. versus yeah. or yeah. what is but, your out of pocket? But you're going to go to the cost for the 
Yeah, yeah. flattened them and it goes up and down for the, <laughs> the other one. Okay. So, but you can isolate each number. There's some wins or some losses. Yeah, yeah. Both okay. Yeah, a lot of the numbers are exactly the same. Yeah, that's yeah. the way. Some are exactly the same, but yes. That's so if we want to have Hickok and Boardman come in just to reassure us about what we think, that's a good idea. That's yeah. what they're getting their brokerage sheet. And then we can make a decision, and it is it's a big swallow. I mean, twenty yeah. percent is huge. Yeah. That's why the state's getting a free loan about it now. Yeah. No, I heard about it. Oh, well, it's, it's across the board across everyone. everyone in the state. So yeah. Yeah. it's not like we're the only ones. No, no, I know. Right. Yeah. Wow. Okay, well, okay. We need more information and we need to think about it, but I don't know what we can do besides just swallow hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. 755. Discussion on town management in light of COVID 19. Do we have anything new to offer? Kyle, Gina? Um, I'm just Gina has put the usual CDC community level tool information saying that Washington County is at the low level with a case rate of 48 per 100,000 population. Um, and I'll do my usual thing of comparing it with the, uh, the old school method, the uh, community transmission method. And that shows that uh, Washington County is at moderate levels of transmission. Uh, all of Vermont is uh, high, substantial, or moderate. Uh, but this is with um, you know very few people taking the PCP tests that get reported, and it's based on uh, the test positivity rates uh, and the number of positive tests. And so uh, nobody knows what the real numbers are of positive tests out there. Uh, I've seen numbers of five or six times as many uh, positive tests as we see here, but you know, <clears throat> not nearly as many people are going to the hospital based on a positive test as, as new used to. Is yeah. The new vaccine yep. is out and sure. um, people are very resistant to wearing masks and uh, are being forced to wearing masks. So, uh, I don't see that we have people tools to work with here. People are vaccinated. Yeah. Are generally not the ones that are passing away either. Yeah. People have refused. So, how many people in the hospital are you know, Say in intensive care, ICU. In Vermont? Yeah. I mean, that's a relevant figure. Right. right. I don't know. But they said nationwide, it's, it's mostly people who are unvaccinated. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Because they get older. It. Yeah. And unvaccinated. Yeah. Or with health conditions. Unvaccinated. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah you, the way they do it now, you need to dive into a weekly surveillance report to get that oh, no information. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's that's why I haven't, I haven't seen the figure yeah. in the paper. So yeah. I'm curious. But nationally, last number I saw was around 400 people a day are dying of COVID still. Uh, nationwide. 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 So it's the number three or the number four cause of death. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Um, we have warrants signed. Mm -hmm. And we have one to look at that I signed. Because our hospital admissions are 4.4 4 per 100,000 population. 4.4 4 per 100,000. Again, 100, to Carl's point, it's kind of tough to really gauge. They change the metrics so, so much. About, as, is it clear is that per, per day or per week? Yeah. Percent staffed inpatient beds in use by patients with confirmed mm -hmm. COVID-19 is 1.9%. Uh -huh. So I guess of all people in the hospital, then just under 2% are actually like in COVID with facilities. confirmed COVID cases. Right. And as they've been saying, even with that, you don't, did, are they there for COVID or for something else? And they happen to have COVID. Right. So, right. So the good news is it appears the vaccines are hopefully working. Yeah. So I guess the only hope we can take. And masks. And masks. I, I, the, um, the con have I mentioned the contradiction here? 
Um, yeah, everyone had to wear a mask. Yeah, everyone has to wear a mask. And since April, we've been doing the most dangerous activity that you can really do during an airborne uh, pandemic. And we've asked people to give their contact information and let us know so we can let people know if there have been any um, COVID tests positive very soon after the contra dance. And up until this last dance on Saturday, there were none with two or three dances a month since April. Um, there have been two since Saturday's dance, but one was the next day. So it was probably not something that he got at the dance. And the other was this morning, you're still a little quick to be getting symptoms from having gotten it at the dance. So it's still, we don't have any evidence yet that anybody has gotten it at the dance with masks. No evidence that's a super spreader event. Yeah, or, or even a spreader event. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Seth, where are we going? We're going to Lawrence. Lawrence? I'm just Did passing just, around. I just did some more. I went to just looking more. To, here you go. Just, thank you. Good. This is two of them here. I think it's just one. It's just I can one. Find. I have the one signed. Yeah, the right? one was already done. So the one I signed. Yeah. yeah. This is the one yeah. that needs to be signed. This is the October third. Yes. Because there's yes. the October. Yes. September twenty second. Yes. One and that one is on the website. Correct. Yes. Okay. And that one's that. That one already. Signed. Okay. Got it. And we've already. Yeah, done unfortunately, we were running up against some due dates. That yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that's left is a personnel matter. I can see. Yeah, just so everyone knows, the DRB meeting for tomorrow um, is canceled because there was one application and it was withdrawn. So right. okay. the meeting was canceled. So, um, and then town fair is Thursday and Friday of this week. So Michelle, Michelle and I are okay. going. So um, Jess, and I do have notes, by the way, they all attended their treasurer and town clerks conference. I do have notes from them that I will bring to you at the next meeting. Okay. So. This is the one I saw. Just going they were, okay. the they were actually okay, quite excited. Jess was super excited and apparently embarrassed them a few times by raising her hand a lot. So <laughs> asking all sorts of questions. So she was super stoked about it. So. <laughs> So I will not, I'm only going funny. to teach their own again. It was pretty cute, yeah. actually. I'm only going to Thursday of the event uh, down at Billington, so I will not carpool with you. Okay. Look forward to seeing you. You're on mute. You're muted. I think, I think you're on mute. Yeah. I, I wanted to follow up on uh, an idea that Carl had, and I know a couple months back, and I know that the um, Vermont League of Cities and Towns has kind of a workbook or a kind of information on it, the DEI training, and whether, you know, um, whether we wanted to bring in Susanna Davis, or whether we wanted to um, determine if we wanted to kind of what issues we wanted to address with that, or if we wanted to address issues regarding that. But I know the Vermont League of Cities and Towns has a whole kind of section on their website providing information to municipalities um, that might be helpful. And maybe not today, but um, maybe in a future board meeting, we can follow up on this. And I think, was there going to be a, a session on it? Um, it, it? Or maybe I missed that. Uh, I might have missed. DEI? Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Somewhere. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of revive that. I'm sorry. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you. That's, that's still on my to-do list to reach out to her a second time and, and talk to her about coming here. Uh, and uh, I don't recall whether there's one coming up this week. Uh, she's been okay. out active in various forums that I've looked at, and I don't recall if it's, it's the BLCT one is, is one or not. But uh, yeah, I will, I will make that a hotter spot on my to-do list. Yeah, and maybe I can just send the link to the VLCT materials to folk from their website. Yeah. Thank you. If you have that handy, that's great. And uh, I'm going out of turn, but if the last item is something that I was supposed to do, I haven't done it. What? <laughs> so know, if, if there's an expectation, I, I'm not, I'm not saying any, if there was an expectation on that, I just wanted to We're give that information on. and that might inform, Kevin, I don't know anything? what the yeah. personnel matter yeah. was. Yeah. So. Oh, you had done something? There's a draft. Oh, there is. 
Yeah, but I, do, I, do I, you I, I'm sometimes? sorry. I haven't I haven't seen it. I apologize. Um I have nothing to do oh, with it. Oh, I sent I sent <laughs> I sent a draft uh, agreement to you. Okay. I, I I was that later today. I apologize. I didn't no, see I that. Said, like two weeks ago. Is there a I, I definitely didn't see that. Um, it's, let me let me check my spam filter because I did not see that. Um, I got spammed. <laughs> you are. Oh, you spammed. You were spammed. <laughs> I can't believe it. So so I think we're debating whether we need to go. Yeah, we don't need to. I don't think. I don't think it. Do. I'll pour. I'll pour. It's from September nineteenth. Well, that's when you sent it to me. Can you forward it to her, please? Be but um, kind of it's yeah. okay. We can yeah. just do it in another meeting. If, in, yeah, if, I, uh, I apologize. I didn't. That's why I reached out to you this morning, John. Um, that's what yes. it, that was. So, <laughs> John. <laughs> yes. You look at your spam. <laughs> I yeah. I'm in. The, I'm yeah. I'm right here in the spam. <laughs> yeah, I, I would need to look at my spam. Uh, so. yeah. I just sent it to you, Judith. I sent it for my phone, though, so it may look a little. So we can get, get it together, then we'll talk about it. But it won't be tonight. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. You got it. That's fine. So okay. there's maybe a different motion in order. There is a different motion in order. One of my favorites. <laughs> can you handle it? Uh, I make a motion that we adjourn tonight's meeting. I second it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Wow, right. Nice. It is. Yeah. yeah, pretty good. And we did a fair amount, actually. We did.